everybody, and welcome back to part two of our aiming series today. Now, most of you guys are wondering, what are we having a part two for? Well, it's mostly to get back to some of the details we may have missed in the first video. There were a few questions about angling and how what to do if a ship's coming close to me, if a ship's moving away from me, as well as we're going to dive down deeper into the ideas of arcs and different types of aiming skills and getting accurate and precise other things that will tend to make your aiming skills a little bit better now i will give a disclaimer i'm not the best battleship player and i'm not the best destroyer player so i'm very generous in cruisers because cruisers have a pretty good taste of both ends of the spectrum so i believe cruisers are kind of the best ideals i can get with so for that instance i'm going to be giving you guys just a few different scenarios and hopefully starting off with the one with the Gras will actually give you the best one, I believe, because there's so many shots that are made in that match that there's there's so much information you can glean from it. Um, and then we also have one in the Hindenburg because I know people have been asking me about tier 10 gameplay. And then you have one in New Mexico and then the Colorado toward the end. But we're gonna hop straight into the DeGrasse real quick. And the reason why I picked the DeGrasse for this aiming exercise is because DeGrasse has high DPM, which means damage per minute for those of you guys unfamiliar with war gaming terms. Now, the reason for it is because there's so many shots I take in this game. All you have to do is literally watch the reticle Try this on your own, and you can kind of get a little good feel for how this, but I will go through and explain it. I slow down this video so you can kind of get an idea. Notice how I'm aiming where the ship is going to be at, just a slight bit of head of where he's going to, where he's at currently, and watch where the shells land right on top of him. You have to aim more so to where you believe the ship is going to be when the shells get there compared to when where the ship is when you start shooting. Because if you aim exactly where the ship is when you shoot, the shells still don't just instantly get there. They're not like an instant mail email. They don't just get there right away. They take time going through the air and you have air resistance. You have the arcs you have to deal with, which like the Americans have high arcs. The Germans have different arcs as well. And so with those arc systems, you have to be aware of how much flight time your shells will spend in the air. And so depending on your nation, you will want to watch the arcs you have so that we know how much you have to aim either in front to the side or however you have to aim in order to get your shells to land specifically where you're wanting them to land. And that's one of the biggest things we're getting adjusted to new lines, new cruisers, new battleships, new nations, um, is the arcs and the way about aiming and also leading your target. Now notice I led the Nuremberg a little bit more than I led the battleship when I was firing at it. That is because the Nuremberg is currently in a turn. So I have to compensate for the fact that he's not going straight He's moving in a turn, so therefore I have to throw the reticle a little bit further in front of him because when he comes out of that turn, he's going to go back full speed. So now as I begin to aim for this New York, I'm going to slow down this part as well because I believe this part is very important with about HE shells and when, when you're using them for ships that have high fire chance. Notice that I'm aiming for his deck. I'm not aiming low. I'm aiming for his deck. Why is that? Armor is very hard to set on fire, but you can set wood on fire pretty easily from our experiences with firewood and camping and so on. So if you can set a ship's deck on fire, you have a better chance of getting fires there than compared to firing at the armor belt or where the armor plating is and you get no fires at all. You're basically just getting pins or ricochets, ricochets and, you know shrapnel hits that are barely doing any damage to the battleship you know they're consistent but you're not going to get fires unless you're really aiming at the deck so you're going to have to aim just a slight bit higher not to the point where you're missing the ship but just a slight bit to where the shells land on the ship's deck and then you can eventually get your full rolls but if you don't get it on the ship's deck you'll probably end up getting the rolls like right there and keep in mind it is fire chance so it doesn't mean you have a hundred percent chance of getting those fires but you can maximize your chances of getting fires when you're aiming at the deck compared to the armor belt now that is one thing to keep in mind like i said anything is chance with this game it doesn't necessarily mean you're invincible or you definitely have a shot it just means you have a higher percentage of doing what you were called to do for the time being now i've started rotating back to the center because i've noticed the cap is still in the red and i would hate 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 to lose this map because of a cap out you know we, we didn't we killed all the ships but we didn't kill kill one and they have the cap and they win by cap it's one of the worst ways to lose this match is because of cap uh, I begin to scope at the Fubuki that's sitting in the back because I realize he may be dropping torpedoes in this direction. So I feel like he's a threat. If I can kind of get him to kind of break direction, normally destroyers don't like it when you're shooting at them. They kind of like work like bugs. Like when you shoot them away, they actually want to start running. Um, 
So if you can do that, that's what I was trying to do with the Fubuki. And now I'm going to go get into a 1v1 engagement with him because I realized that battleship Texas is now dead. No need for me to really be dealing with him. And notice how I'm leading the Fubuki as he's in his turns. I first do it vertical to get the the adjustment down for how high I need to aim. Then I aim horizontal to see how far I need to aim in front of where his ship is going. Now, not all the ships are going to pin him. But there will be a good amount of me getting him compared to just all my shells just missing him completely. Now, watch as I'm noticing, I'm waiting for him to do slight turns because if he can throw himself just slightly in front of my reticle, I can actually get a few more shells into him. It's very rare you can get a whole lot of shots into him when they're going completely straight. It's going to take practice to get this. And as he begins to try and launch torpedoes, because I'm realizing he's on his broadside now, I'm going to go ahead, take the shot, and I've already begun slowing down and skating right past those torpedoes. Nope, nope, you're not taking my DeGrasse with you. That's a good old death that did not admit. Yep, miss me with that death stuff. I'm not with it. And all them torpedoes go away. Hocus pocus, poof, they gone. There goes your kill. You didn't have it after all. And as another Fubuki comes around the distance, I do this again. Remember, vertical, horizontal with the lead, fire, the dispersion kicks in, and the Fubuki is gone again. Hocus Pocus, Harry Potter movie. And as we begin to get ready to go into the next segment here, I want to kind of explain angling. I really wish I could dive down into angling for you guys, but they're really, armor mechanics and blitz are kind of broken. They're really, they're there, but they're not there. If I, You know what I'm saying? There is no auto bounce like there is in PC. There isn't a magic formula for if you turn this sort of route, your shells will bounce. There are some times you can get some shells to bounce depending on your, the caliber of gun that's shooting at you and where it is shooting at you. But there is no such thing as like auto bounce angles and so on and so forth to like you can be impervious to shells from firing at this angle. There, there really is none of that. I really wish I could get dive into that, but there really isn't much of angling principles here. Now, you remember this video from the last time. Now, as I switch over to AP, remember I'm aiming at the bow, the front end of the ship, allowing the shells to fly into the bow or the stern, the back of the ship or the front of the ship. Normally, that's where the weakest armor parts are at. You saw the rolls were 600 and 300 rolls. Watch the difference in the roll numbers when I fire at the armor belt toward the middle with my York. Mostly zeros and 300s. Now, it's a big difference between the 600s we were rolling when we were shooting at the bow of the ship and the stern compared to the middle of the ship. And that's what you want to do if you're shooting AP at a battleship to get your full rolls. You can normally roll about your full roll amount there. So there, there you go with that one. And here was some destroyer deletion action here at tier 10 because I know you guys have been begging me to put tier 10 videos in here. And I'm sorry, guys, there isn't a whole lot of competition there's a lot of bots at tier 10 and so there isn't a whole lot of matches i can really show you guys i figured this was a good one hopefully don't hate me d3000 for this but i it was showing them this is a good one for plunging fire because you realize those are full rolls a lot of you guys i know you said wow my ap shells over pin destroyers every time allow yourself some distance and predict where your destroyer will be at and you'll get shots like this Mm -hmm. D3000 is gone. I'm sorry, buddy. I had, to, I had to do it. It was just perfect timing with that video. And now with aiming with distance. Now, if you guys remember from the last video, I was talking about smoke and watching smoke. Keep in mind, I'm going to reiterate that once again. Watching the smoke is very important because it will tell you what the ship is doing, even if you can't quite tell what the ship is doing. Because our eyes will sometimes play tricks on us, making us think, well, the ship's still moving toward me. And actually, I've already hit the reverse button like five minutes ago. You know, so like I said before, watching the smoke is very important. If you see the smoke like it's on the rest of these battleships and other ships out in the distance where it's blowing toward the back of the ship, it's blowing away from the ship, you know it's going forward. If the smoke is blowing over the bridge area, so basically it's blowing toward the front. If you see it blowing toward the front of the ship, you know you have to aim at the bow area. Well, not the bow, but the stern area in the back in order to hit the shells you want. So you aim toward the back when you see the smoke blowing up forward, and you aim toward the front when you see the smoke going backward. And then if you don't see any smoke at all, you can just assume that ship has stopped. But be weary of that if you don't see any smoke because they could be AFK. They could have stopped just for a second and switching gears. So you have to be careful when they're switching in that switching gear phase because you might fire when they switch gears. And the next thing you know, they have the acceleration perk and they're flying off in the next direction. And you missed because you thought they didn't have smoke. So they weren't moving at all. I've had that happen a few times. That's why I can explain it like that. But Keep in mind of watching the smoke and watching what happens. And I, like I said, with knowing how destroyers have that speed boost, 
look for the thick black smoke. You're going to see them just speed up out of nowhere. If you see them speed out of nowhere and it's just thick black smoke, like coal black, you know, West Virginia coal black smoke, it is definitely speed boost. You're going to have to lead the destroyer a little bit further than you normally do. Luckily, destroyers have gotten a little better with maneuverabilities. I came back from the days where destroyers didn't know what turning was or turn signals. So it was really easy just to like, okay, let me just throw this reticle like five feet in front of you and watch the shells go in. It's a whole different ball game now. And so with the smoke, like I said, you have to be very, very, very watchful of the smoke areas. If you can watch the smoke, you can normally nail down your shots pretty, pretty consistently, unless your guns have pretty bad dispersion, which battleships and other ships like that tend to have a bad dispersion. You'll know. Play a new ship in co-op a few times and kind of get an idea for what the dispersion is like on the ship and what type of equipment you would like to run on the ship, which will make it pretty well versed in what, how your play style is. Because once you can get a ship pretty accustomed to the way the arc falls and everything else and you know how long it takes for shells to land at a certain distance, then you can easily aim at a distance like I'm doing here with my New Mexico and easily make the shots happen that you need to make happen. And now for the last one, I'm going to show you a few matches in the Colorado and we're going to kind of explain citadels because we've kind of gone over arcs. We've gone over watching the smoke. We've gone over what to do with a ship's coming towards you or away from you. We've gone over a few different things here and we've kind of glossed over a few other things. So hopefully I'll link some more videos in the channel so you guys can get a few more PC examples as to what I'm talking about. If this doesn't quite make sense because I know the information is quick and I know it's very bite-sized material. So you won't be able to satisfy all your curiosities because Wargaming doesn't give me all this information. I'm basically giving you almost all I know in the best general way possible without confusing you as much as possible. Um, but toward the end here, we're going to talk about Citadels. Citadels in this game are very RNG based and I really wish there was like with armor I really wish there was some consistency where I could tell you guys like aim here 100% Citadel there's no talking about it there's no voting on it there's no democracy you're getting a Citadel I, I really wish that it was like that but it really 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 doesn't work like that it's very RNG based now there are some tips for how you can maximize your chance for getting a citadel like i was talking about earlier with maximizing your ch fire chance now maximizing a citadel you want to aim for where the smoke stacks are or where you see the turrets because the turrets house the ammunition and the smoke stacks house the boiler room boiler room engine room however the ship is designed it houses those areas so if you have those areas in your sight and you can plunge into those areas with plunging fire with AP shells and get them to plunge into the deck, you'll more than likely get a citadel off those few areas. And that's where you want to aim at mostly to get those citadels. Now, what if I don't have a pinning shot and they're angling up to me and I can't really shoot them? Aim for the superstructure. Superstructure is that nice little pretty part where all the bridge and all that nice little flag and all that stuff sits on top. Yeah, where you see all the nice little buildings sitting on top of the ship, that's the superstructure. Aim for that with HE shells or however you feel necessary to do. But superstructure, you can't hit anything. At least you're managing to roll a few better rolls. It's better than aiming for the armor belt like you saw me doing earlier with the York. So with Citadels, like I said, they're very RNG based, but that is a way you can honestly make them work for you, especially with ship caliber. Now, like I said, ship caliber, the angle of the ship is, is moving in comparison to your aim, those three factors are really going to kind of go into with the citadels there and are not always going to be consistent. So the best thing you can do is just aim the best you can and hopefully those citadels go off for you if you have the right caliber of gun. If they don't, practice a few times with different battleships and different cruisers in the training room. Most of the cruiser lights are not likely to get citadels unless on other cruiser lights. Yeah, it, it just tends to work like that. It, it takes a while to kind of get used to the idea of what caliber. The bigger the caliber, the more likely it is a Citadel. You can check with the Citadel chance. Usually that will give you a good idea for how much you know will come out of a ship with the Citadels. The percentage chance is usually located with the guns. But with that, keep in mind those different factors that go into play every time when you're playing this game. There, there's going to be factors that here that you can control and there's factors you can't control. And hopefully this kind of nails down some of those perspectives with armor and everything else. Like I said, I really wish I could explain better detail, but this is all where gaming really gives me. And now you have the low accuracy, low precision. That's basically where all of us start. We have no clue where we're firing at. And our plan is to hopefully get to the high accuracy, high precision where our cells are landing all on target and they're doing as much damage as they possibly can do. This just takes time and it takes practice. So get out there, 
Do some co-op matches if you need to really get the nail on the arcs, citadels, and stuff that makes things work for you, honestly. And like I said, the only thing you can make it do is work for you because you're the one playing the game at the end of the day. I'm just here to give you guys advice from my 5,000 battles experience-wise. I was once in your shoes, too, where I just started off this game as well. But like I said, guys, if you need anything, questions, comments, look me up on Facebook, look me up on Discord. We have the promo. We have the Warships Community Discord. So join those two or join any of the above. I'll be happy to answer any questions in the comments section. Subscribe to the channel if you guys liked it, what you see. And I haven't forgotten about your ship reviews, guys. I definitely took your information very seriously. So we will hopefully get your ship reviews and a whole bunch of other stuff for you guys on the way. For now, we're going to finish up the mini series as quickly as I can. But till then, guys, I'm going to see you guys on the Pharisees. Good luck to you guys out there and happy hunting out there, captains.